I have two different platforms. I have this one and I have another one. And so I'm going to be uploading this video to both. And so if you don't have a lot of patience, I have a lot to say. So go to the top right hand corner of your screen, click on the three dots here on YouTube, and then click on speed settings and then click on either 1.5x or 2x. That way you can watch everything I see in this video in half the amount of time. And um, you'll still be able to hear everything. I'll just talk faster, right? So, high value men and high value women. For those of you who are aware of this pretty hot topic lately, um, this is something that has come to my attention recently. Uh, it's not something that, it's not a term that I was aware of um, prior to, I want to say, maybe a couple of months ago or a month ago or whatever. But um, a video that Kevin Samuels did uh, went viral or at least it kind of, you know, it made it splash in the social media world. Um, I found the video through Derek Jackson and his platform in which a lot of his followers, I'm one of them, um, they brought to his attention a video, uh, an episode that he did with a young lady that made six figures and she was looking for a man who um, also made six figures or at least was successful enough to not feel intimidated by her success and also to um, not need any help from her. Now I understood when I saw the video, like when I first saw a clip of what, you know, Dare Jackson shared, um, I was furious. I was absolutely furious, right? because I got to only see a clip of it. And yeah, Kevin Samuels came off really harsh, okay? Uh, Kevin Samuels, um, he calls himself an image consultant. Um, though what he actually appears to be doing is more like life coaching slash uh, mentoring slash, um, what else could you call this guy? A matchmaker to some extent, but he does not call himself those things. Um, I don't know if it's because he doesn't want the liability or whatever, um, but he says he is an image consultant. Okay, so I guess that was, from what I understand, that was what he originally started out being, but then it kind of ventured off in him being able to mentor, um, you know, these high value men that he speaks of and hooking them up with potential marriage partners. And his whole thing is he has actually succeeded in marrying um, several couples. Okay, and that's great. So uh, I was furious and I said, how dare this guy? He told this, he rated this girl, told her she was uh, at most a five or something like that. Don't quote me on this. I'm just going based off what I remember. And, you know, he told her, ma'am, you know, without your makeup, <laughs> your hair, your weave, whatever, uh, you have a son, a 13 year old son, you're a five or four at best or whatever. Um, like I said, don't quote me on this. You, you guys may have to look at this video for yourself. And, you know, he said, uh, you know, uh, it's like he was telling her that she couldn't have this high value man that she was saying she wanted um, and that she would have to settle for less. Um, it infuriated me because I was, you know, um, just put off by how blunt he was, how harsh he appeared. And in my opinion and view, you can have whatever it is you want, if you can manifest it. But yes, you do have to be realistic. You can't, you can't just, um, just say you can have anything without having some sort of realistic expectations. But at the same time, um, you should not limit yourself to what you think you're, um, what, what you, what it is you think you can have, because you could think you can't have a million dollars. You could think that you can't have a wonderful relationship. You could think that you can't have, um, you know, a mansion, or maybe you could think you can't have whatever it is. It's, it's just not simply true. You can have it if you can visualize it, if you can keep your mind focused on what it is you want, and if you can um, have the discipline enough to put in your efforts towards it. So not only is there manifestation work to be done mentally, mostly spiritually, but also there is the physical aspect of you putting forth action, energy, you know, action into 
helping manifest what it is you want. I've manifested many things and I really didn't have to do much of anything except be at the right place at the right time. Okay. Um, I also believe that when you put God first and you pray to God for things you want, you ask God for things you want and you're willing to make a sacrifice, um, meaning you're willing to do better, meaning you're willing to put God first, you're willing to um, to really put your best foot forward. You know what I'm saying? There's some things you may have to give up, you know, uh, in exchange for what God may give you. Um, but if you put God first, you know, whatever his will is for you, if it is in his will for you to have certain things, he will bless you with it. Sometimes he will bless you with something far greater than you could imagine. Now, all of that aside, that's what I believe. And that's what I know to be true. All of that aside, um, about like, I want to say two to three weeks later, YouTube suggested Kevin Samuels, uh, YouTube channel. Um, and I said, Oh, wait a minute. Is this the guy who was talking all that mess to this woman and upset so many people? And I said, let me click on this video. Let me let me check check out his channel. Let me see what he's all about. You know, because I I I, I did know that it was a small clip that I saw before, and I said, let me just really analyze what this guy is all about. So I've watched several videos on his channel. Um, I've seen some of his earlier videos. I've seen some of his latest videos. However, I have not seen all of them. There's so many episodes that he has. And what I will say is this. Um, I think because of some of the backlash he's received, he has made an effort to kind of be a bit more, um, I don't know, uh, a little nicer. A little nicer. But I understand where he's coming from. Okay? Now, he says... The whole thing of a high value man and a high value woman, he didn't make these things up. It's just what he says has already been created by society. OK, and this is what um, I guess a certain status group um, have deemed to be a high value man. OK, so a high value man, according to what he says um, socially or whatever this status group has created, um, one, um, now he's basing this off. If you live in Atlanta, you, you're making at least, um, 10,000 per month. So you, it's, it's a, a high earning type of person. Um, a high value man is a high earner. Okay. Uh, he's listing minimally 10,000. Okay. Um, you know, not my standards. He said he didn't create this and it is what it is. Two, length of time, performance, length of time that you would have been making this kind of money. So that man would have had to make a uh, minimum 10000 per month over a period of three to five years. Okay, proving that he is a truly um, high value um, in his potential. Uh, group acceptance. So he needs to be accepted by other high value men. So he needs to be accepted by other men in the same status rank or in the know or whatever. Okay. Um, for network. Okay. So um, he must uh, somewhat, I guess I'm, he's saying that they need to be um, desirable to be, you know, in terms of do others desire to network with them within the same high value men circle okay so if he is in business or whatever um and also the, the high value man a lot of this these qualifications is usually for a man who is not a celebrity uh or an entertainer okay so it's usually not someone who's famous um it's this is usually applying to um a man in the business world or a man that is a professional you know white collar whatever okay um, so these rules apply to that group, not necessarily to famous men, celebrities, entertainers, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, visibility, okay. Position and income are LinkedIn level, meaning, um, you go to look that person up, you see all of these professional listings for them. You, you, you may read an article about them being successful or what it is they do or whatever. Um, and you know, it, it's something where you can definitely tell they have a reputation. They've made a good, solid reputation for themselves um, in their field, in their career, whatever, okay, in their community. 
um, and utility, useful to the group and others. So useful to other high value men that they network with and I'm assuming also um, those that are in their social circle, okay? So I found that to be very interesting um, because the whole value thing, the whole, his, his whole platform is based off of um, women like to call in and get critiqued and be ranked and rated um, to figure out if they qualify to get a high value man. And it was assumed originally that it has to be someone making a lot of money, okay? Um, high value women, okay, uh, it's generally what you would see in Proverbs 31, uh, as someone else had pointed out in his comment section, and I recognize that. Uh, one, a feminine asset, you know, a woman needs to be a feminine asset. She needs to be uh, able to support her man, okay, um, and be feminine at the same time. Um, discerning she need you know and from what he described she needs to know who to hang around who to not associate with so if you are not of a good quality or caliber type of person if you're ratchet in any form if you're um, lowbrow in any form you have to be discerned enough as a woman to not hang out with lowbrow women or women who um, you know live a certain kind of lifestyle, always in the club, twerking, stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, three, enthusiastic for life. So having a really positive attitude and, 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 and enthusiastic for life in general. Okay. That, that one is self-explanatory. Uh, loyal and dedicated to her man. Okay. And I think that one is general to be expected. Discipline. Um, and discipline in which from what I would gather, um, Someone who is not quick to get out here hopping uh, into a man's bed um, just because she's hot and bothered. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's my take from it. But um, it, it's just someone who they're, they, they carry themselves in a very respectful manner. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they also know how to bite their tongue when it is necessary. They don't, they're not quick to... Um, quick to anger, quick to, you know, uh, tell someone off, you know, or give a person a piece of their mind, perhaps. Um, and, and also in other regards, you know, um, they know how to handle themselves in most situations, period, regardless of what it has to do with, okay? Um, alluring and appealing in mind, body, and spirit. So he was talking about a woman keeping up her appearance, uh, making sure she dressed well, making sure she keeps her body fit, uh, making sure she is mentally, emotionally stable and happy um, on her own accord, you know, those kind of things, and that it shows, okay? Um, submissive, able to allow men to lead. I don't think that's an issue or problem. Um, you know, a lot of churches, uh, it's something they should teach, but not all churches do this. Um, but my pastor definitely has taught, you know, hey, women should be submissive. But he also has taught men that in order for a woman to be submissive, you need to be a good leader. She needs to be able to trust you in order to hand over the rings to you and let you lead. In that way, a woman will feel comfortable with um, being submissive, meaning letting a man take a lead. To be submissive doesn't mean, you know, you're his slave. It doesn't mean you're bound down to him. It doesn't mean that you are um, degraded in any form. It just means allowing a man to lead, okay? And most women that I know, um, including myself, if we trust you to lead and you, you know what I'm saying, that you can handle yourself and you can handle the situation, we're more than happy to let you lead because it makes things a whole lot easier for us, okay? Women, you know, we don't want to have to do it all. We really don't. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's nice. It's nice to be able to let a man lead, okay, and be able to trust them to take care of things, handle business, and, you know, you, ain't, you don't have to do it all. You don't have to make all the decisions yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, you, you should be on the same accord, you know, enough to where you can trust that man that, you know, whatever decision needs to be made, um, he can make it. And if he isn't sure that, you know, you know, you can trust him to, um, you know, uh, 
to seek you out for a second opinion and maybe to seek out other people that he trusts that are knowledgeable for another opinion. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that that's not an issue, though. A lot of women, they don't understand what it means to be submissive and let a man lead. Um, but I encourage you ladies to get a real understanding of that. Don't be quick to say, uh, what? What? You know, um, feminists have did a really good job of telling women that um, men are bullies. And, you know, uh, if you give them an inch, they will take advantage of you. And it's not always the case. OK, now, don't give a full submissiveness, meaning you don't give submissiveness to any man. You give that to the man who has proven he is trustworthy, okay? Only to a man who has earned and gained your trust. Only to a man who has shown you that he is uh, a good man, has good integrity, treats you and others with respect. And um, he's willing to do what's good for um, everyone and not just himself, okay? Um, don't, don't submit to a man just because you're all in love with him, but yet... You see the signs clearly that he's treating you like crap, okay? That's that's stupid and that's foolish. That's not what God meant and that's not what uh, he's saying, Kevin Samuels or anybody would recommend, okay? Um, now, has a comforting character, soothing. That's cool. That's not an issue. That's not a problem. Um, that actually should come, you know, natural to women. Um Though I feel like when a woman really connects with a man that she really likes, really is into, and she's at ease with him, meaning she's not on guard because she doesn't trust him and this and that and other, like, you know, um, it's easier for a woman to be soothing and comforting, um, especially if she knows that he's as equally, you know, comforting and supportive and soothing to her, okay, because um, it should be a two-way street okay it shouldn't be you're just only his peace of mind and he's never yours you need to be both each other's peace of mind um but like i said you know ladies you got to pick these guys with the best character you know don't pick based off of oh he's your type he's cute he got swag this and other pick him based off of how he makes you feel and how he treats you and if you see you got a good one Treat them good, okay? Don't let a good one slip through. Um, has a comforting character. Oh, yeah, we went over that. Nurturing and caring. That should come natural to most women. And for most women, it does. Every now and then, you got a woman, she has no clue what it means to be nurturing and caring. Um, but that can be worked on, okay, right? Uh, an emotionally stable, sane, and in sound mind. Uh, to me, that pretty much was the same thing as Lauren Pillen in mind, body, and spirit. But generally, you need to be healthy mentally, emotionally, okay, physically, those kind of things. Um, so that's a good list, right? Doesn't seem superficial at all. However, um, the only thing that I, I can say is when you look at what a high value woman is expected to be or should be compared to what a high value man is identified as, it doesn't, in my opinion, quite match up. However, like I said, his whole platform is he knows a lot of men that make a lot of money. They have successful careers. And this is what they want out of a woman. Um, while it's important to know what a good man wants, um, there were no traits listed under the high value man in terms of what other men recommend in, you know, in their, their high status group as a high value man. I didn't see anything listing that this man needs to have integrity. Uh, this man needs to have good character. This man needs to be God fearing or this man needs to be uh, mentally, emotionally stable or this man needs to be respectful of himself and, uh, and his peers or whatever. Those kind of things. Right. Um, but perhaps. Perhaps. And I could be wrong about this. Perhaps it's because men tend to not roll with other men that they do not um, sense a level of respect among each other. Um, men hang out with each other based on, based on not only status, but also mutual respect for one another. Um, no matter if you're blue collar, white collar, um, and based off of, yeah, do you have integrity or not, you know? 
if you don't have any integrity, you out of the group because they can't trust you kind of thing, you know? So um, perhaps it comes more natural, easier to them to have that understanding. But when it comes to women being able to see these characters um, in a man that should be a high quality man, this should be pointed out by Kevin Samuels that, hey, you know, okay, it's good to make good money, but you also need to have good character, good integrity, uh, show respect and honor to others and also your and, and, and expect that back from others, you know, um, those kind of things, you know, um, I have yet to hear him really um, acknowledge those kind of things, though I don't think he doesn't uh, think those things are important. But I just want to say that, you know, ladies, because I, I don't understand. I mean, I understand these women calling it, but I don't. Uh, you couldn't get me to call into his show to be rated. Uh, you couldn't get me to call in to debate or even discuss any issues with him on that show. Um, and maybe I might change my mind about that. Maybe. Um, it depends on what the topic is or uh, if I ever, you know, let's let's say if he ever reach out for any reason, he said, hey, come on the show. Let's talk. You know, I find it interesting what you're saying. You know, maybe I might change my mind about that. I don't know. But in my opinion, a lot of women, they call in, even if he's not being harsh with them, because I've seen times where I understood why he was harsh with them, because maybe he felt like someone was calling in being disrespectful or he felt like someone was calling in uh degrading men and down talking or trash talking men off the bat or whatever he he's not for any of that kind of nonsense there or uh one you know he he's upset because you know like i said that young lady called in to be rated but he asked callers to call in um really just to give commentary about something of the topic or whatever but he felt like she was disrespecting the platform and he said look you can hire me um, to be rated and to receive my services. You know, you don't have to call in and try to take advantage of this for free. So he was in a bad mood at that point. So um, <laughs> he kind of let her have it. So he's not always harsh, but his audience is harsh. I, I have, I think I have more problem with his audience than I do with, um, with him and whatever he's teaching. But uh, because his audience, I don't think they understand truly what a high value man is. They oh, they have this great understanding of what it is. I, I feel like they have a better understanding of what a high value woman is than they do a high value man. And still, they don't entirely understand what a high value woman is. They don't. They hear it, but it goes in one ear and go out the other. Because a lot of the men, their focus is on uh, some of the nonsense that he's teaching about, uh, okay, single mothers are a no a woman in a danger zone which is uh what does he say 27 to 35 and things like that or beyond that danger zone um the a lot of his audience focuses on those shallow things while i understand um it's not always desirable to date or marry someone with kids uh, people, they're failing to look at that's on both ends. Okay. That's on both ends. I don't understand how the men in his audience think that somehow that it's no problem that a man have a son or a daughter has children and women don't feel some kind of way about them having kids, but they get to feel some kind of way about women having kids. They also have this negative assumption that if a woman has kids, she was never married when she had them. Or that the father is somehow not involved in that child's life and is not financially taken care of or responsible for that child. And that if they get with this woman who has a child or children, that somehow they are going to be responsible for paying for this child or having to put up with this child's supposedly... Um, bad behavior you know it, it's it's as if they painted this whole negative picture and stigma of what uh a single mother is or a woman who may be you know widowed or divorced with children it, it's really um it's really just not a good look in that regard um I highly caution anyone who visits this platform and even Kevin to himself 
that if you're going to, you know, mentor your audience or, you know, teach them, um, please help them to understand that while there's nothing wrong with a average man or a blue collar working man with, or, you know, with average income or whatever, um, many of your audience, uh, they are not by the standards that were listed on your site your platform or anybody else's platform for that matter because i say i understand you didn't create this many of them are not high value they're not high value i don't many of them even if you went beyond those standards because to me in my opinion a high value is according to god's god's view of what a high value man is i love the the standards of a high value woman that's wonderful but in all honesty to leave out what God expects of a man to be in terms of high value and only go with what man's standard is, worldly standards, it's it's almost very misleading, very misguiding. And it has a lot of, you know, his audience, um, which is predominantly male, thinking that somehow they're on some pedestal and many of them, they identify with this high value, these high value standards because the standards that are listed and the reason these women are calling to be rated is based off of what supposedly a high value man wants because these women claim they want high value men. Now, um, if you're not a high value man, you're not a high earner and you're not well respected in your profession and, and, and known in your community and things like that. Why are you in his comment section degrading women based off of these uh, aesthetic standards? Because a lot of them, they're going by the aesthetic standards. They're not going by a woman's heart. They're not going by what she has to offer, her other qualities, her personality. They're not going off of that. A lot of times, Kevin is asking, how old are they? You know, when a woman calls in, he's asking her age. He's asking where she lives. He's asking if she has any children or not. You know, if she's single or not. Um, you know, maybe sometimes, I think he asks what, the, what she does for a living, though he claims high-value men don't care what women do for a living. Their PhD, their master's degree doesn't matter. How much money they make doesn't matter. Now, that doesn't bother me. It is what it is. If men with money and prestige don't care what a woman has to bring to the table on a material level and her education, um, though I, I doubt it that some of them don't. I, I'm pretty sure there are some that do. Um, however, that's their standard if they don't really care as much because they feel like they have so much to offer. They just want the simple things, the simple good things out of a woman. That's not a problem. But your audience doesn't understand it goes beyond that shallow stuff. If they got kids or not, you know, if they um, are a certain age or not, their height, their weight, because Kevin asked those things too, their height and their weight, if they're fit, if they're attractive. Um, Kevin, your, your audience, your, your, your predominantly male audience is misogynistic, honey. They totally are missing the picture of what you're pointing out. From what I can tell, a lot of what you are teaching is, is likely what should have been taught by a lot of male role models and female role models to the generation as they're growing up. Maybe perhaps things might be better, but However, um, they, they're absolutely clueless. They're nitpicking what they think a high-value man is and a high-value woman is, and they're nitpicking based off of a lot of them feel but hurt by a lot of women who they feel have rejected them in some form, okay? Um, they feel but hurt that a lot of these women are even calling in talking about they want a high-value man because they know a lot of them, a lot of your audience know they're not a high-value man. You know, and they feel some kind of way about it. Therefore, they like to get at the women in the comment section and in the live chat. It, it's just disgusting to see that. And I really feel like you're doing this justice if you don't correct that. Correct that mindset in them. Let them know, hey, this is not what I'm preaching. I'm preaching this and that and other. I mean, you make yourself very clear, but your audience, they seem to be missing that. Uh, the women get it. The men do not. But your your audience is predominantly male. Um, but I, I just want to say this. I want to say this. 
Because there are some things I definitely also still disagree with. While there's some things I agree with that Kevin Samuels teaches or whatever on his platform, there are some things that I definitely also disagree with. Um, this whole thing of, you know, uh, debating about women, uh, if they need men and if men need women, nonsense. And it's divisive. And it does absolutely nothing for the community, especially the black community. It does nothing for men and women in general when it comes to them coming together in harmony okay you can't you can't get them to come together in harmony if you're pitting them against one another or having these um men in your audience think that they don't need women because if that was the case then they can just go and be homosexual uh they can just go and be uh, <laughs> they could just go be hermits and not have any relations or socializing with women in any form and not ever get married and have children. Okay. Um, I understand your whole point was if it came down to survival, but your audience, your predominantly male audience misses that point. They miss that point. And I encourage anybody, if you watch that platform, any other platform that is preaching this high value men versus high value women and what they want stuff, please pay attention to the real details and stop cherry picking and nitpicking what you want to hear because it's convenient for your mindset because your mindset is somewhere very misguided and unhealthy and low level and low vibrational. OK, a, a lot of Kevin's audience needs therapy because they really, truly do not grasp the concepts he's teaching. They it, it's like it goes right over their head. And a lot of them, they're they're misogynist. Kevin, a majority of your audience is misogynist. I understand you trying to empower these men. You trying to even help these women. But they need therapy, a lot of them, because they what you're t telling them or teaching them or mentoring them is going way over their head, way over their head. And they're. Um, resorting to low level thinking when they interpret uh, what they think you're saying, you know, um, because some things I just don't find any fault with. But when I get, you know, get in comment section or it's like, wow, they, they don't get it. And that's very dangerous. That's very dangerous. Uh, I don't know if Kevin Samuels understand that he's he's influencing uh, a whole generation of young women and young men, some in their middle age, to think in ways that are actually very damaging to the community and it's when it comes down to love, dating, marriage, and, and, and you know, it's, it's, it's not a good look. It's not. Um, it may be good for your platform, because you're getting all these views, all these ratings, all these members joining and all the, the money donated through Super Chats and everything else um, when you're doing your lives. But you need to think about the long term impact that your channel and your platform will your podcast, whatever you call it, will have on these 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 influ these highly um, influential minds like because they're they're being shaped. Even though these are grown women and men, their minds are being shaped when they should be corrected. They should be corrected. Because a lot of them, they're taking what they want from it and they're misconstruing it. They're just twisting it all around to, to what they want it to be, okay? And that's not good. That's just not good at all. Um, I want to say this. High value man, high value woman. It's whatever God deems to be high value man, high value woman. I don't really too much care for these standards that socially human beings put out there because human beings are extremely misguided. And the one thing you got to remember, and I'm not even really religious like that, but I do believe in God. And I do believe that there is a devil out there that is opposed to what God wants for mankind and is against mankind. And we'll do everything possible to misguide us. Okay. Um, there's a lower force of energy period that if you're not careful, it will drag you down. And if you are simple minded enough to let your ego take over and tell you 
you you know give you this this sense of uh inflated self importance because you have this or you have that you have this kind of career you have this kind of money um all of a sudden all these women want you or all these men want you because of your looks or whatever it is um you guys are headed down a dark road that will lead you to nowhere that will actually allow you to truly be happy some of you will lead yourself straight to hell <laughs> y'all keep forgetting this world is a temporary place i don't care if you believe in god if you believe in heaven hell or whatever um this platform ain't for you if you don't believe in it because that's what i believe in and that's some of the principles i'm i'm basing my life coaching off of but whatever it is you believe in okay um understand there is light energy and there's dark energy and depending on if you are operating from your higher spiritual self or operating from what God wants for us, or if you're operating from your ego or from worldly standards and superficiality, you're either going to go towards the light, towards the good energy, towards, you know, one day you're going to make it in heaven, or are you going to make a positive life for yourself according to God's will, or you're going to head yourself towards this dark place this dark space, this dark energy, this low vibrational energy, or to hell, or to the, the devil's room, whatever it is you, you identify with. You have a choice. Two paths, one or the other. You're not, you know, you guys think you can tread between the two? No. You can only do that for so long before you find yourself truly having to make a choice, because you're not going to tread them both. Okay? A lot of you are going to find yourself falling by the pit sides, the dark ways and all that because in, in finding yourselves eventually unhappy, bitter, resentful, whatever it may be, and just feeling like you're in hell. You know what I'm saying? Whether you make it there or not because of your poor choices in life, because of your over inflated self-importance and ego based off of worldly standards, based off of human standards, based off of aesthetic standards, superficial standards. Um, your sense of self based off of what you have. What you have could easily fall away from you. Your money, your clothes, your cars, your jobs, your careers, your titles, your looks. All of that could fall away from you in a snap of a finger. God can do it. The devil can do it. Whoever can, all you know what I'm saying? You could cause yourself that downfall. Okay. It all can be taken away. It can be taken away by just some sort of uh, disaster. Whatever it is you want to identify with, understand it all can be taken away. It also can be gained, earned. It can also can be a blessing to some. You're not ever supposed to associate and identify your sense of self or importance to material things or how many people are attracted to you or want you. The moment you do that is the moment you are lost and you will make poor choices that eventually will fail you. So I strongly encourage people to move away from this high value man, high value woman stuff um, in terms of, because you, you got some people, they have their own ideas of what a high value woman is. You know, and if you listen to these rappers, they, they think they high value because they got money, clothes, weaves, makeup, uh, you know, they think they got the best WAP. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that, ladies, is gonna drag you straight down. It's just gonna it's gonna lead you to nowhere where you're gonna be happy. Okay. Um, you selling yourself short. Um, if you're going by the high value, you know, high value standards of what a woman or man is according to God or uh whatever spiritual enlightenment you're into. That's a positive. That's a good thing. But please, you guys, don't get caught up in this worldly standard crap. I, I you know, I would like to just curse, but I'm not going to do it because um, I don't want my monetizing affected. But I really think a lot of this stuff is nonsense. And ladies, um, it's nothing wrong with wanting a provider. It's nothing wrong with wanting a good man that can provide for um, the children that you have with them. And when you decide to have those babies, it should be a choice for you if you get to stay home with those children and raise those children until you feel ready to go back into the workforce. I've seen women cry because they have to go back literally weeks 
you know, a, a week later or weeks later or maybe even a couple months later after they had their baby and got to hand their child over to a daycare worker or something, uh, uh, you know, while they got to go back into the workplace. And it shouldn't have to be like that. I think women should hold out for a man who can offer you the opportunity to stay home with your child for a whole year or two or the first five years if that's what you want to do to raise your children. Okay? Um, that's a provider and he should be able to do so. Um, a lot of times men don't feel like they can do that these days because people are materialistic. Everybody wants to have two cars. They want to have fancy new cars with these car notes and the expensive car insurance, the full coverage, you know, because you have to have that when you have a new car. They want to have uh, expensive homes, you know, uh, 150 to 300,000 or more. Okay. Um, <laughs> they want to have the designer clothes or the clothes from the department store or wherever they want to eat out every weekend you know they want to do this and other and it's it is not that you can't have nice things it's not that you can't have a social life and do these things you can do all these things but you need to do so on a budget you need to do so with discipline you need to do so with um compromise you know a lot of you some of y'all are materialistic and that's why you can't um, you men can't offer to be a provider and you women can't get a provider because you guys are expecting things that they don't matter in the end scheme. Y'all saying, oh, it costs a lot of money to raise a family. <sighs> yes, if you're materialistic. Yes, if you don't know how to budget and manage your money. Yes, if you don't know how to invest your money. Yes, if you have to have all these things that nine times out of ten you got to put on credit to have it anyway. It's a choice. It truly is a choice, you know, or you could put your money together, save up so you can have a time off, whatever. But um, I, I just say this. I really strongly encourage women, please do not seek out these so-called high value men because, oh, you feel like you have to have a certain kind of lifestyle. Because a lot of what I'm hearing on Kevin's platform, Kevin Samuel's platform, and some of the other platforms is these men expect you to um, not be proud of your education. Not, you know, um, they, they, they say they don't care anything about who you are. They just expect you to behave and act a certain way. You know, uh, they don't value women, truly. A lot of them, they want you to shut your mouth, not ever say anything, not have a voice, not have an opinion. Um, it's, it's a lot of things that they don't like. And if you go on the platform, you're going to see what I'm talking about. It, and it's so degrading to a point where what is it worth to have a man that, oh, he's successful in his career, he makes a lot of money, but he expects you to have to shrink down because his masculinity is so fragile because he's in his ego. A lot of these men, they walk around with self-inflated egos and their egos are also inflated off of who approves of them, who desires them. And um, the moment you keep it real with them or the moment you are um, anything less than, you know, whatever they think you should be according to their standards and desires, um, you're you're not worth anything and i think that's disgusting these men deem themselves the prize i think that's disgusting and nowhere in uh any holy book does man is man referred to by god as the prize no a woman is because of what she brings to a man she could multiply what he has she could be a, truly an asset it ain't, it ain't that men don't have value. Men have a very high value too. But their value is not higher than a woman's. God gave man woman because he was very unhappy. He was lonely. He was very unfulfilled in life. God saw that. He created man first, right? So he saw that man needed a companion. And who did he give to man? 
woman. So how in the how in the heck do you so-called high value men or any man? I don't care if you are John or uh, average John Doe, blue, blue collar, whatever you are, white collar. How do you ever think you can come out of your mouth or have this attitude that you don't need women? Many of you would lose your mind without women. Women are not perfect. We come with our nuisances, but so do you. And for you to say that you don't need women, you're going against God's intentions. You're going against God's will. You're going against what God intended. And it's disgusting. And I'm giving fair warning. If you guys keep preaching this nonsense and finding ways to, uh, you know, carry on in which you're degrading women, there's nothing wrong with it promoting love, black love, black couples, because um, a lot of his platform is geared towards black people, though it's open to anyone who appreciates what he's teaching. There's nothing wrong with um, wanting to see more marriages and more um, fam two care at home families and pe seeing people succeed. OK, there's nothing wrong with wanting to see more healthy marriages. OK, and things of that sort and people being happy. But at what cost? At what cost in which women are feeling like they have to conform to some very restricted expectations? And I'm not talking about the expectations that God intended, which is in every holy book for women when they are with a man. Not talking about that. I'm talking about these other uh, superficial, ridiculous standards that these men are spouting on their platforms. They're very um, misogynistic, very much degrading women. I don't want a high value man if that, if that is what they come with. It sounds like a hassle to me. Ladies, you can just have your careers. Many of you are successful, especially in the black community. Many of you are educated. You have your careers. You make your money. Okay. Um, in these times, women, they don't have to um, bow down to any particular standards. They don't have to be told that women can't do what men can do in this and that and other. This is not about competing against sexes and genders. This is about why are you even making the comparisons and saying what women, uh, that women can't do what men do in this and that. It, Leave that alone. It's already been proven that women can do what men can do. But that's not important. I'm not into feminist women that are like, oh, we don't need men. We can do everything they can do. I'm not into that. I think that's nonsense too. But at the same time, I'm certainly not into hearing no men talk about we don't need women. Uh, they need us and they can't do what we can do. Nonsense, BS, stop it. It's garbage. And it has no place in... The conversation, if you really truly are trying to cause um, harmony and unions between the genders and having them come together in happy, blessed marriages, raise, you know, having more two parent um, households in certain communities, especially the black community, which is lacking on that, sorely lacking on that. Too many single black mothers out here, you know, and don't blame that on the women. Women are responsible for what happened with their bodies, but the men are also responsible for what comes out of their bodies and, 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 and not walking away from their responsibilities. They shouldn't be out there sticking themselves in everything if they're not going to take accountability for what happens afterwards. Because you guys are just as responsible for these single moms as the single moms are responsible for being single moms. But they, they're all in Kevin Samuel's um, comment section Talking crazy, talking about no single moms. Ew, you know what I'm saying? What? Many of you come from a single mom. If you, especially you from the if you from the black community, oh, many of those black men in those comments they come from single moms. Some of you that ain't black came from single moms. Don't ever degrade a single mom ever. She is to be respected because she stood up and did what your father couldn't do. Because he didn't want to take the responsibility or he didn't want to deal with being able to be in a union with your mother. Because he wasn't man enough. Okay, so um, 
I'll, I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that. Value yourselves. And, and if I were y'all, um, you're better off, ladies, if you're looking for a good husband, um, please go on, uh, what is this? <laughs> apply God's word. Apply God's word. Type in on YouTube, apply God's word. Um, you will see a channel. This channel is a great channel. He preaches based off of God's word. And it doesn't matter to me what religion you are. Um, it's still the same standards, God's word. So don't be put off by him saying Christian, if you're Muslim or Jewish or whatever. It's still the same standards that God has for um, men and women if they want to come together in a blessed union. Okay. Um, and it doesn't include being degraded. And it doesn't include um, looking down on one another or having to conform to um, some sort of societal standards, worldly standards, in order to be able to get a good um, husband or wife for marriage. It teaches, according to God's word, on how to be a good man of faith and a good woman of faith in order to come together in a union of faith. Because marriage is about God. Marriage is a covenant that honors God. It don't have nothing to do with you personally as a uh, uh, individual, it just doesn't. In today's time, people, they feel like, oh, marriage has nothing to do with God because you can go to a courthouse and you can get um, a marriage license and you can get married right there in the courthouse. You can get married without having in the presence of God. You can, you can, and you might even be able to have a good marriage, but some of y'all may not. Some of y'all, it doesn't matter. If you come under God, you still could have your problems. But if you understand the teachings that are taught according to God's will, you will understand how to make that marriage work if it is possible to work. Sometimes it just won't because it never was a good match to begin with. Or that person or those two, both people, they may not be cut out for it. You know, some things are just too much. But I just, I, I don't, I'm not for this whole high value man thing. I'm sorry. You couldn't convince me that it's worth it to go through those standards. You know, um, Kevin mentions, you know, uh, these high value men, they're likely to cheat. Not all of them, but many of them do. Is that what you want, women? Is that what you want, ladies? Because this man makes so much money, you willing to turn a blind eye to that? That's what you want? Yeah. Average man can cheat too. He's likely to probably cheat too. Not necessarily if, you know, if he know what he got, but... Um, it's just so many nonsense things that I heard there on that platform. And there's some good things I heard as well on that platform. But if, if you're not discerning enough or wise enough or intelligent enough to understand the difference, um, then you're going to be grossly misguided. And I'm seeing too many people in the comment section grossly misguided, mostly men, unfortunately, black men. Um, and that's just awful because there's already enough misguided black men in the black community. OK, which is why there's so many single black women, not enough marriages. OK, um, I'm black for those of you who didn't know. So if you hear me talking about the black community. Don't be offended um, because, yes, in other communities, they have those issues, too, but not nearly as prevalent. Do this. Do the stats on it. Go look up statistics. It's a bigger issue in the black community. And as a black woman, I have to speak up about it. I have to speak up about it. Because it's a it's it's a sad thing. It's a very sad thing. But I understand people of other races are going through the same thing. Because I I've get I've gotten many of you as clients to deal with men ghosting you or deal with men you know leaving you with a child and all these other things. So I'm not excluding you guys from the conversation. You're part of it too. But it's just it's hit the black community the worst, and it's just hard for me to sit back and watch this and not speak up or say anything about it. Because I think it's going to cause a, a, a further generational um, damage. You know, um, if you think things are bad now, oh, they're going to get worse. Because women, like they have no worth. And women gladly signing up to call in to be rated to see if they're worthy or not. I literally sat in the chat and watched um, men say, no, um, no single moms. Uh, no women um, uh, past 35 or something like that. Just saying some nasty, ugly things 
about women based off of their uh, uh, their age, if they have children or not, uh, saying stuff like, no big girls. What? What? Really? Oh, if you don't have a natural hair color, so if you decide one day that the color orange or purple is your color for you, uh, instead of them seeing what's in your heart and seeing if they really match you in personality, they're looking at your hair color. Come on. They're looking at if you're wearing weave or not. Come on. I mean, I get some people, they're not fond of weave or whatever, but, um, and that's a personal preference, but look at people for what's in their heart, what's in their mind, and if you really are compatible or not, if you can grow together, if you are spiritually aligned, you know what I'm saying? If you both see each other as an asset, if you both feel like you could just enjoy living your lives together and raising a family, Please go off of standards that make sense, not off of stupid, shallow things, because we live in this world where everybody is chasing money. They done made money their God, and that's so freaking sad. Because one day all this is going to come to an end, and then you're going to face the maker, or whatever this is you believe. Like I said, if you don't believe in God, please get off my platform, because you, I, I'm going to be honest with you, you... you um, you're not going to understand half the things that I'm talking about, or you're just not going to, I'm sorry. I don't have anything against people who don't believe in God, but you're not, all this is just going to go over your head or you're not going to be in agreement, and it just doesn't make sense. Go find the platform that fits you. No discrimination. I'm just saying you can stick around if you want to, but I'm going to be talking about God here because um, I believe in God and I follow God and you know, to leave God out of the conversation or out of the picture, or out of your plans is insanity. Many people out here, they're not happy because they left God out of the plans and I'm not for it. <laughs> you know, so I'm going to leave it at that. Please comment in the comment section what you think about this whole thing, what you feel about it. And don't be nasty. You can be honest, you can be blunt, but don't be nasty because if you're nasty, I'm going to delete your comments because... Um, this is my platform. Isn't that what Kevin Samuel say all the time? This is my platform. I don't hate the man. I'm not against him. But I think he could stand to be more responsible with his platform. Because he has a very powerful platform. It can be used for good. Or it can be used to only benefit himself. And while he watches the, the ship go down in flames. You know what I'm saying? Um, I can see he's trying. You know what I'm saying? To, to to show people that he's not degrading women. And I understand he's he's also been hard on men. You know, I don't see those videos anymore because his focus lately has been on the women. I think it would be great if he could balance that out more and talk more about these men, mostly the ones in his comment section that are besides themselves and they're totally missing what he is preaching. Okay. Um, but some of his earlier videos, you know. I'm still looking for those videos. People said, oh, he gets on the men too. I've only heard one video clip um, in a video from three months ago where I heard he got on a man for wasting a woman's time um, dating her, uh, knowing he wasn't ready for marriage. Um, he couldn't see marriage until maybe two, three years later, but he knew this girl wanted marriage and he got on, his, he got on that guy's case. And I was glad to see that. I said, okay, I see him. I see him. He he does get on the men too. You know, he could stand to balance that out more in all the videos so that these guys can stop thinking that this is all about the women and coming down hard on them with these superficial standards or whatever. But um, y'all, let's just get with healthy mindedness in, in 2021 and beyond. Okay. Moving beyond this point. This video is made in 2021. Moving beyond this point, please, let's get with healthy mindedness, healthy hearts, healthy desires, healthy unions, not this superficial garbage. Okay, let's be supportive of one another and let's be real. Let's be honest with one another. Let's have integrity. Okay, so you men, if you don't want marriage, be honest with women and do not waste a good woman's time who you do know wants marriage, okay? Don't assume because she has kids, oh, she don't want marriage. Don't assume because she's at a certain age, she don't want kids. Don't assume anything. Just be honest and be upfront, okay? 
And definitely don't waste the woman's time in her 30s. Hell, don't even waste the woman's time in her 20s. But you better off wasting a woman's uh, time in her 20s than you are a woman in her 30s if you know you don't want marriage and kids. Okay? But really, just don't waste anybody's time. Ladies, don't, don't waste your own time with men that if you mention marriage up front and waiting for uh waiting to um become intimate uh you know until you see engagement and marriage first um and that guy is not for it then he's not there for a commitment let alone marriage stop giving your cookies away stop acting hot and bothered that's why these men keep ghosting you that's why they keep using you for friends and benefits or casual fairs or wherever you want um, or they jumping around from woman to woman because you're out here giving your goods away. Also, by the way, men, they don't think you're, they don't think your sex, they don't think your body, they don't think it's worth anything. You know why, lady? Because you all are giving away so much, so frequently in exchange for no commitment that they don't, it doesn't hold any value to them in the dating market or in the market for relationships or marriage. Okay, so as much as we can be mad at men and their, their sexist attitudes, their misogyny, women, you all have also done it to yourselves. You have devalued yourselves. Doesn't matter, he can go get it from somebody else. Close your legs until you find someone who is actually looking for the same thing you're looking for. If every woman did that, they wouldn't be devaluing women saying uh, your sex doesn't matter, your 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 relations and your intimacy doesn't matter to me. Mm. What happens when they get thrown in jail with a bunch of men for long term? Oh, it matters to them. Some of them, it matters so much that they go gay. They be on the down low and stuff like that. Raping other men or letting other men, you know what I'm saying? So if it doesn't matter to them, then, then why do they do that when they get locked up in jail? Oh, it matters. They much prefer, much would prefer it with you. But it doesn't matter to them if they can freely get it easily with no requirements of commitment. You know what I'm saying? Let them deal with the hand or let them go get it from, you know, somebody that they can pay for that. The escort or something. Don't let them just freely get it from you. And then you're mad later wondering why they don't want to commit. They don't want to settle down. They don't want marriage. They don't want this. They don't want that. And wonder why they're also saying, uh, when ladies, oh, your WAP doesn't matter. Because that's something else they're saying. They're saying your WAP doesn't even matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter is what they're saying. You know, but yet you guys are in these rap videos and, and running around talking about your WAP. It don't matter to them. Not even to the average man, it doesn't matter to them. Read it all in the comments. They don't think it matters. Go to Kevin Samuels' platform and read. It doesn't matter to them. According to them, you bring nothing to the table and you got to be bowing down to them or scruffing to get to them. Sounds crazy to me. I ain't for it. That's for darn sure. I ain't for it. A high value woman knows her worth and she ain't buying into that at all. So um, I'll just say this because I know my worth. And yes, it goes beyond some WAP, okay? Um, your personality, how you connect with someone on a spiritual level, on a mental, emotional level, um, the nurturing you bring. Man, anybody who's ever been around me sick or ill, man... I nursed them back into health like I have a medical degree. <laughs> like I've been working in a hospital for years. Anybody who knows me knows this. Okay. Um, I uplift people in, a, in ways that a lot of people, they don't get from other people. I really do. Um, very resourceful. Very supportive. And anybody who knows me knows that. So I know I'm a high value woman. Child or no child. Doesn't make a difference. And um, you couldn't convince me, you couldn't convince me that any of this nonsense that they preaching is something that I have to put up with, okay? Um, I'm all for being a woman of God, though. I'm, I Oh, I appreciate a man who knows how to lead. I don't have a problem with being submissive if a man knows how to lead. Uh, I don't have a problem with being, you know, sweet, kind, nurturing, 
loving, supportive. I have no problem with that. No, I don't. But a man has to come with respect. He has to come with love. He can't be on no BS. He can't be playing no games. He can't be manipulative. He can't be manipulative. No. Mm -mm. He can't be on some selfish mess. You know what I'm saying? Looking out for himself only. A woman who suspects a man is doing that is not going to uh, be submissive to, to a man. She's not going to trust him. She's not even going to let up on an inch with him. Okay? Um, you know, feminine, you guys, they're even over there telling women that they're not feminine if they have an accent from the Bronx. <laughs> That's crazy. A woman can't help where she was born and raised. And if she has a Bronx accent, could she stand to take, uh, what is that? Um, um, what do they call it? Um, I know what it's called grooming classes or whatever to learn to speak a little bit more ladylike and things and a little less rough yeah but they they have all these weird standards for what's feminine and what isn't if you're vocal if you it seems like if you have a mind of your own uh if you're not going to put me nonsense oh you're not feminine i knew a guy who once told me i wasn't feminine and then he got with the most masculine looking behaving aggressive unattractive woman ever inside and out whom i'm pretty sure he knows is definitely masculine like the only thing she's missing is you know a, a, a dick that's all she's missing you know <laughs> so i can't be bothered to hear any man tell me if i'm feminine or not it ain't for a man to tell you if he if you're feminine or not ladies so that's another nonsense that they're carrying on with this, you know, high value, this and that other. Um, know your worth, ladies. Know your worth. Um, some of you may have heard about any of this or been on his platform or somebody else's platform. Some of you may have not. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to do another video about this because it's just too much to talk about. Peace, y'all.